Hello and welcome to my January 2022 report on the solar PV, Tesla Powerwall and other electrical systems at our property in Huntingdonshire in England. As you can hear, I've decided to continue to add a narration to the graphs. Here's the first graph showing the electrical energy coming in each day. Details of the system are shown in the description below the video. The total solar production this month was 233 units, a daily average of 7.5 units, well up on gloomy December. The media has reported that it has been the sunniest January since 2001, or even longer depending on how the comparison is made. But as we'll see, it hasn't been quite that good here based on my 11 years of results for our southwest array. 846 grid units were imported in total, with 30 at peak rate, as there were a few days when the battery ran out during the evening due to the tenant feeling the need to use additional heating up in the annex above the garage. It has been very cold at times, but he's gone through previous winters sometimes with only one of the two storage heaters being used. Eight units were exported to the grid, which was 0.8% of the total electrical energy coming in and 3.5% of the solar energy produced. This second graph shows the origin of the energy consumed by the property and the car. The figures behind this graph are mainly supplied by the Tesla app, with the car charging figures coming from the My Energy app. 15.2% of the energy came directly from solar, and a further 5.4% was solar coming to the property via the power wall. So 20.6% of the electrical energy basically came from solar. That proportion would be much higher if the annex wasn't occupied. 79.4% of the solar units went into the car via the Zappi charger. The weather forecast has been very unreliable, sometimes predicting sun before we actually got cloud, and on other occasions predicting slow to clear mist before a sun-filled day. So I felt it was safer to boost the power wall to a high state of charge each night. If the next day ended up being sunnier than expected, the car was there to mop up the excess that would otherwise go to the grid. The car also received 27 low rate units from the grid in a very low mileage month where only 127 miles were driven at 2.1 pence per mile. This third graph shows the energy going into and coming out of the power wall each day, as reported by the Tesla app. By the end of the month, 88.6% of the energy that went in during the month came back out, which is consistent with the expectation. Here's the self-power graph, based on figures from the Tesla app, which reported that the proportion of self-power was 43.7%, but around two-thirds of that energy originated from the grid. This next graph shows the solar southwest production over the years since 2012. The January figure of 82 units was double December's figures, and the fifth best January out of the 11 years. So certainly not the sunniest since 2001 on this particular array. The January arithmetic mean is now 75.3 units and the median is 71. The cumulative graph doesn't show much at this time of year, but here it is for completeness. And here's the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. The 28 day moving average line for the southeast array is well above where it was a year ago, by nearly two units a day, while the southwest array shows a smaller but significant increase. The prolonged gap in solar for much of December is made clearer now that the data points for January have been added. This is the distribution of the energy input for the past 365 days. And here's an overview of the daily solar production for that same period. Finally, here is the summary graph for our grid electricity usage since we moved here in the summer of 2011. The grey line is the number of low rate units and the red line is the number of peak rate units used each month as measured on the left hand scale. The monthly electricity bill, shown by the yellow line in the right hand scale, was up on last month with a tenant spending more days in residence. The green line shows the monthly feed-in tariff payments to us for the Southwest Array's generation and I'm looking forward to it climbing above the yellow cost line as solar production improves in the coming months. That's all for this month's report. I'll leave you with the home energy uses graphs from the Tesla app for each day of January and hope to see you again next month.